got it. Keep moving forward, moving forward. Forgive me. Yeah, that's not your side, but he's getting one. You got your one. That's, that's all it matters. Alright. Fishing any violation. Now, now you can hold one. Heck yeah! Take the car. Alright. 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 We'll get those life vest zipping clips strapped down on those rods and stow away those tackle bags because we are going fishing. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bass Two Anglers podcast. I'm your host, Keith Nicewanger, and I hope this episode finds you with five for 25 in your live well. The sport of professional bass fishing has changed more in the last three years than at any time during its over 50-year history. In 2019, we saw our beloved sport splinter into multiple groups that continue to evolve today. But first, if you like the content that we produce on this channel, or even if you don't, please hit the subscribe button and make sure to like this video. <coughs> If you're a member of my family, get on all your devices and hit the subscribe and like button. Do it now. Thank you. We are the Western representatives for ducket fishing, pro-driven rods, reels, and baits. Ducket is building a Western presence, and if you haven't seen it yet, you soon will. New independent dealerships are popping up all the time. Ducket fishing, you know these guys, the strongest pro staff in all of professional tournament fishing. And all the products are designed by these very same pros. Find out about the Ducket lineup of pro-driven rods, reels, and baits by going to their website, ducketfishing.com. The sport of professional bass fishing can be traced back to over 50 years from the point where Ray Scott decided to start the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. Hey, newbie, did you know that's what BASS stood for? Bass Anglers Sportsman Society. With a 50-plus year track record, the sport of professional bass fishing rivals other more mainstream sports in terms of its longevity. You would think that a sport with 50 years under its belt would be intact and dialed in. Yet the sport is evolving more today than at any time in its 50-year history. Certainly the invention of various media technologies has made it possible for us to keep live scoreboards, uh, allow us into an angler's boat, so that we can witness firsthand 
the tournament as it unfolds. In this episode, we will hear from Gary Klein, Mike Iaconelli, Fletcher Shryock, Mark Daniels Jr., and Cliff Cajun Baby Crochet, and we will get their perspective on how things went down during that turbulent period of time that saw BASS split into Major League Fishing. Much of the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour format is the brainchild of Gary Klein. Klein is a well-established pro with over 30 Bassmaster Classic appearances and a full stable of sponsors. He was willing to put it all on the line to make the sport better. Well, the parking lot meeting that you're referring to is at the Bassmasters Classic. I believe it was 2009 in Shreveport, Louisiana on the Red River. And, uh, you know, we're just two anglers and we're spooling line and we're, man, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this? Or, man, this sport needs to be like this and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That conversation continues still today. But what we what we decided to do is let's give it a try. Let, let, let's try to um, elevate the sport, create a sport out of competitive angling. And, uh, you know, that's what we've been focused on. That's what we've been working with. Uh, it, you know, stuff like, you know, our vision is grand. Let me just say that. Okay. It's way bigger than where we are today. If it was over with tomorrow, I, I wouldn't be satisfied. I'm not where our vision or my vision is for major league fishing and for the sport of competitive angling and for the conservation uh, and for our fisheries across this country. There's, you know, there's always a better way, a better method. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how Major League Fishing started. Um, the format came out of my head. If you take a look at the format of Major League Fishing, it's very easy to understand if you know that I'm the one that developed the format because the format that I designed was based off of my 40 years of fishing conventional events. And I'm, there's nothing wrong. I mean, if it wasn't for the dream that Ray Scott had right. and his vision, it wouldn't allow a 15-year-old kid from Northern California to have his dream or to live his dream. But over the years, it became very obvious to me that there's got to be more. There's got to be something better uh, that's just never happened before. And again, the sport is evolving. And Boyd recognized that because Boyd's train of thought was right along with mine. You know, how can we captivate a, a, a true sports audience? And how can we take our sport to network television and present it as a true sport? For example, you know, we air uh, quite a few of our shows now on Discovery. And it's one of the highest rated uh, programs on Discovery Channel. And that's a whole new audience than an outdoor channel uh, you know, sportsman's product, but they cross over because what we're doing is we're exposing our sport through our very competitive format, catch, weigh, release, every scoreable bass counts, officials in the boat. And I mean, it, it just captivates you because if you look at conventional events like I did, what other competition that's a true profession do you compete against another uh, opponent and you have no idea where you stand? Right, right. Absolutely. You blast off in the morning unless you happen to run, up, run into somebody during the course of the day and they're honest with you. You don't know what you're catching. I mean, you could have the best fishing day of your life, but you've been catching enough fish to get behind. Right. You're catching three pounders and you don't know if you need to be catching four or fives. So with our score tracker, I mean, you know every fish that's being caught. You know when you need to move. You need, you know, there's a lot of strategy that's involved in it. The other thing that I never really appreciated or I didn't enjoy were blast offs because oh. they were they were boat races. Oh. And there's a lot of anglers, you know, that don't have a lot of time in boats. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Um, and that's where all your equipment got beat up. And then you go out and you fish all day long and you develop an area. You got a pattern going and they're biting. So now what do you do? You have to look at your watch and figure, well, I got to leave in 45 minutes to make the race back to the weigh in. Then when you get to the weigh-in, you stand there for two and a half hours and go through the procedures when your day should be over with, you should be thinking about the next day of competition and preparing. So that's how the Major League Fishing format developed. You, you know, Gary, I, traditionally, uh, the bass tournament weigh-in has really been the 
public's first connection with that event. You know, they gather there to see what's going on. But today, with technology and the internet, internet and score tracker, like you said, that day two of Group A, that last hour is intense. Group B, that last hour is brutal. The knockout round, unbelievable. And, of course, championship day. You've got all these different intense dramas that build. I, I, can't, I can't take my eye off it. And I, I would be willing to forfeit the, uh, <laughs> the weigh-in the to be able to see that happen all week long. Yeah, it is a little addictive because there's a lot of pressure points during the course of the day. You know, yes. not only do you have the guys, you know, running for the lead, but then there's so many lead changes. There's so many cut line changes. And there's a lot of strategy that the, you oh, yeah. see the anglers use. Uh, so it, 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 it's a fun format. I know from a competitor that creating the format, but having never lived it, uh, was very important to me. So in... Uh, I want to say 2011, when we had our first competition on Lake Amstead, I made sure that I was in the first qualifying group. So I was one of the first of uh, eight anglers to ever play the game. And it was like, wow. I mean, I knew that at the end of that day, we had something to work with. And I talked to all the guys. They all had a big grin on their face. What our format does that a conventional format does not do is in our format, you cannot get complacent, right? Where if you go out and fish for eight hours or nine hours for five bites, you can get real complacent and you can go fish for five bites. But in our competitions, you have to catch them. Now we're still fishing for the same size fish, but you just can't roll in on a spot and catch 25 pounds and coast the rest of the day because right. these guys are good and they're going to catch you. So right. what it does, and it's, it, our format is not for all anglers. Because what it does is it pushes the anglers to limits that they've never experienced before. There's a lot of pressure involved in our competitions. And you, you, know, you see that with anglers that are competing. Some love the format. Some have a real hard time with it because, my God, I just caught one. You mean I got to catch another one? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it's amazing. You watch a guy, you know, for example, I think it was Michael Neal caught like a 4-2 Waited in, got back up, and, you know, this was just last week at Chick, yep. stood back up, and he dropped two places. <laughs> I mean, it was like, wow. That's that leaderboard update for you. Mike Iaconelli was right in the middle of the big split, well-established on the BASS side of the pro fishing spectrum. He gave up comfort for a chance to grow. Iaconelli has since returned to BASS, in his words, only because of the major changes brought about by the angler split in 2019. You are yeah. one of the big names that left BASS to join Major League Fishing's new tour. Can you give us some insight into how you made that decision to move to the Bass Pro Tour? Yeah, that was a difficult time uh, for everyone, I think. Yeah, uh, so absolutely. For the yeah, for the anglers, for the organizations, for the sponsors. Sponsors were confused. The fans, the fans were confused. I can give you the simplest, easiest answer you'll ever hear about the topic, which is... When all that was going down, you got to remember uh, the state of the sport and keep in mind the state of the sport and the anglers and, and their livelihood, right? Their careers. And at that point, we had a lot of anglers that were unhappy that they didn't have a say or a little say, even a little say in their own destiny, right? Mm -hmm. So- you know, think, think about that. Think about dedicating your life to a profession that you work, you know, you, you, you work nonstop, you know, every day, day in, day out, um, financially, you know, you give your life to this sport and you make it, you make it, right? You, you make it to the top. And when you get there, you sort of feel like, you're just a name, right? You, you know, you don't have a say into your own destiny or your future or your brand or any of that stuff, right? You're, you're sort of, you know, just a, you know, just a name on a list. That's a bad thing. And, you know, the other thing real quick is look at other sports. Other sports have all gone through these growing pains, right? All of them, baseball, football, hockey, all of them, basketball, right? Where 
at some point the athlete said, look, we're the reason you guys have fans. We're the reason you're making the money. We're the reason you have these events. You're, we're the reason for everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're the athletes. Um, I think, you know, it got to a point of the sport where the anglers wanted to have more control of their own fate. And that, that's what that movement was all about, right? It, it, it was about nothing besides that. And again, other sports, you saw a breakaway from other sports and they were able to create a league or an association or a group where the anglers had some say and some rights. That's what that movement was all about when it happened. Um, you know, it was the toughest decision for me because – I was an owner of Major League Fishing. I was a supporter of bass and still am because it's where my career was based. But at the end of the day, you know, I want what's best for the anglers. And I think a lot of the guys made the decision saying, hey, we need to stand up for ourselves at this point. We need to, we need to take some ownership of what we do in our sport. And that's what that movement was all about. Um, you know, regardless of how you look at how it's ended up right now, I think it was a really big and important thing. And, yep. and you know, we're, we're talking about it here just a few, a few years after it happens. If we were having the same podcast 10 or 20 years from now, it would be so obvious, black and white, at how important that was yeah. to the sport. Right. Yeah. But it's still so fresh now. It's hard to analyze it. But I can tell you that already it's had a lot of positive impacts. You know, I know that bass has made giant improvements mm -hmm. in angler relations and anglers say and anglers rights. And so has MLF. Right. So, yeah. you know, that was a really difficult thing, but it was a necessary thing. I don't care if you love MLF and you hate bass or you hate bass and love MLF. <laughs> um, it was, it was a necessary thing. And we still need to lobby for more rights than we have at our, at the present time. So it's, it's not over. Uh, but, but in hindsight, I'm glad it happened. The sport's growing. That's all you could ask for. Fletcher Shryock was a newcomer to the BASS elite series in 2018 as a relative rookie in the sport. Shryock made the leap to Major League Fishing largely on blind faith. Not knowing which way to go, he chose to follow the big names that were leaving BASS. Several years, and then, then 2019 came along. Yeah, yeah. Talk about that year. I've, I've asked that question to several guys this week. I just think uh, it's such a pivotal year for the sport. It was. It was the end of 18, yeah, when everything yeah. was splitting up, and we all had decisions to make. Um yeah, I don't really it, that uh that was definitely an interesting year and it's been interesting since how much just things kind of keep evolving, you know, but I think it's been all for the good. Yeah, and now your brother Hunter, right? Yep. He fishes the BASS Elite. Yep. Okay. Uh what are dinner table conversations like when you guys get together? Oh, uh, we've talked we've talked about everything under the sun and 99% yeah. of the time we agree about everything. You yeah. know what I mean? I think when you really sit back and look at it, I think it created an opportunity for more anglers. Absolutely. Uh, than what we had before with this way that FLW was sitting, you know, the last few years until MLF bought them out wasn't looking really good. Uh, BP, starting at the BPT helped just grow more. I think more people are able to be better successful bass fishermen right now because of that change that happened in 2018 or going into 2019. Yeah. And then that's a, that's a great way of looking at it. I know so, so many people it opened up more spots for sure. Yeah. And then so many people take that as a negative thing and worry about where so-and-so is fishing. Who cares? Is it on? Is it, is it, is it on? Is it live stream? Can we watch it? Can we watch Who it? Cares? Yeah, I'm watching it all anyway. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. You know, to me, uh, the more events we can have out there, the better. I just, exactly. I, I, you know, I can't get enough of that stuff. I watch all of it. So as much as I can anyway, Mark Daniels jr. Found himself in a similar position. Imagine working to get through the opens to finally get yourself to the BASS elite series only to see this big split happen. Daniels, like many other pros, were forced to follow their heart. 
Next big decision. I mean, I'm sure there's been other big decisions, but <laughs> 2000, 2019 was it was a big year for the sport. Oh, for uh, sure. Whether you, you know, I mean, there are positives and negatives, but uh, yeah, I had to make that decision. Yeah. To leave BASS and come to Major League Fishing, uh, what what was that like for you? Very very difficult for me. Um, you know, I, I had fished FLW three years prior. That was my entry level to professional bass fishing. I fished on FLW side for three years, as did many of us. Um, but there was always that uh, pressure to get over there and to compete on the Bassmaster Elite Series because you had the biggest names over yeah. there. Kevin was there, Ed was there, Skeet. The list is super long. They were all there. Now, we had our superstars too, don't get me wrong, Absolutely. on FLW side. These guys are crazy good, right? But Bass was getting all the notoriety. And so it was like, you wanted to compete at the top of the game, you need to get over there. So just like everybody else, man, I put all my money in them opens and I fished simultaneously, FLW Tour and the Bassmaster Opens and I qualify for the Elite Series. Uh, in, 20, in 2016 is when I qualified. My rookie year on the Elite Series was 2017. And so my career over there was very short lived because I only competed on the bass side for two years. So I didn't have a lot of those negative experiences as some of the guys that have been doing this yeah. for years. Kevin yeah. Edwin, you know, Timmy Horton, all these guys, right? They've been fishing bass their whole career. So they have this relationship. I didn't really have a lot. In my two years, I had a great experience, man. I won a big event my second year. Um, I made the classic both years. Things were looking great for me. Sponsorship dollars were looking good. I was having a great time. It was just all good. And so, uh, you know, I, I didn't really have anything bad to say. So to make the decision to jump over to Major League Fishing was, was hard for me. And it was a little concerning. Um, it's like I worked my whole career to get where I'm at right now. And now I'm just going to break off and leave. But you start talking to guys, like all these names I just yeah. listed, and they're all leaving. Like without a – they're not second-guessing anything. Yeah. They're like, I'm out. 100% I'm out. And I'm like, well, dang. If the biggest names in the game are leaving, what am I to do? You know, I don't – I want to fish against the best, all of the best. And, and that includes everyone who – got an invitation to major league fishing and that did not because once you make it to this level you're a great angler in my in my opinion and so i want to fish against the best right well 80 percent of the best left yeah. and i was fortunate enough to get an invitation so what was i to do to sit back no i want to compete against the best and i like the i like the uh um the storyline that they pitched what they were wanting to do you know, I was already a fan of Major League Fishing from watching the Cups, you know, and so that was my decision. Very hard decision for me, though. Very, very difficult. How about the format? The format is completely different than what any of us grew up in bass tournaments with. I mean, I mean, really, if this format had been in place back in, with Ray Scott, bass boats might not have live wells. I know, it. that's true. You, you know? Yeah, no, it's definitely. I mean, <laughs> that's funny you say that. So, so that format does it? Oh, the format does it change? Does it change the way you fish? So the format is the most difficult part about it all. Yeah. Um, yes, it does change the way you fish. It changes the way you think. It changes the way you practice. It changes. It changes everything. Um, but I feel like w with it all, it makes you a better angler because you never stop evolving. You're never safe. You can never get comfortable. Um, you never have a break. It, it's just, it's, it's full on game the entire time. Whereas in a five fish tournament that we all love and I still love myself and I will still fish five fish tournaments. Um, you know, you go out and crack 20 pounds in the first hour, <laughs> you kind of easing around the rest of the day. Like, Sandwich time. Yeah, man, I had a good day. <laughs> and especially if you know the fishery, right? So like, I'll use the California Delta. We're gonna up that a little bit to 25 pounds, yeah. and it happens. Sometimes you'll go out, catch 25 pounds in the first couple hours. Phenomenal day, right? Rest of the day, I'm not gonna go jacking on none of more of my spots, none of my fish, none of that. I'm going practicing at the very best, Yeah. right? You never can do that in Major League Fishing. Right. Never. You, you know, it's interesting, we we always talk about, I got, I got, a, I got a limit. Yeah. There's no yeah. limits. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, yeah, so that's, that's one of fishermen's favorite saying. Well, I got, I got a limit. I got a limit. Nah, no, you didn't. <laughs> you better, you better keep. You better go back. You better go back digging that bag again. Like it just never stops, man. And so what it's done is, it makes you work harder on the water during a tournament. Yeah. Because you may run all your spots and boom, you ran dry. You caught whatever you caught, but you're still ten pounds outside the cut or whatever it is. Now you're immediately back in practice mode, trying to figure it out again, and then the next day is the same. And then and then you qualify to the next round, and everybody goes back to zero. Then you got to do it all over again. Very difficult, man. And a lot of people underappreciate how difficult it is because they've never done it. And I'll be the first one to tell you, and I'm just going to be straight up: it is much harder than your traditional five fish tournament on your mental, on your body on your drive on everything because it never stops from the time they say go until the time is lines out with the exception of your two 15 minute breaks cliff crochet another bass rookie again had only been on tour for a couple of years he also had to put up or shut up so many of the younger bass elite series pros didn't have the experience that the older veterans had crochet also made the decision to follow the older established names in their move to the Bass Pro Tour. So 2019 was a, a, I mean, it was a, I don't know what you call it, a good year or a bad year for bass fishing. We had a split, of the split, you know, the Elite Series, so many guys left the Elite Series and went over. What, what was that like for you? Was that an easy decision? Or no, was it, no, that was a, 2019 was interesting. And, and it was good. That, that's bad. a good way of describing it because, it, it, at the very least, it was interesting. It was, you know, some people think it was good, some people thought it was bad, right. some people make deals with their lives, some people, who knows? But it, it was, it was definitely interesting. So the, the first thing was that it was, it was cool to be involved in um, an era of of fishing. It was a something, you know, that split happened, and whether it's good or bad or who knows where it goes it it happened and, and i was there so that, that's kind of cool uh the decision to leave bass and go to major league fishing was was uh it was very hard i mean it was it was, it was i mean it, it's almost like walking away from it's almost like walking away from your family i mean because all you all you knew was bass growing up and that's what you watched and that's what you took part in and and uh you know you fight to get to the elite series and you you walk away from that qualification to go chase this this new plan this new business this new company and, and uh, it was tough it was i mean it was i mean it was a tough decision but i i thought the upside could be could be good i thought that uh Maybe there was a you know ceiling was higher. I mean, Bass is a 52-year-old company, and they've done some good things, and they got you know a big brand. And Major League Fishing was uh, a young company, still a young company. It seemed like they had momentum at the time. Everybody, you know, everybody got in our boats. All the marshals that got in our boats at Elite Series tournaments want to talk about Major League Fishing and why why you don't fish it, how you get into it. They had a lot of momentum and. Uh, be yeah, it, was, it was a tough decision. Today, like so many things in our society, we have a split in our sport. I'm gonna stop short of calling it a civil war, but you know as well as I do that this is a flashpoint for argument, not only across dinner tables, but on the internet and all the social media platforms. You want to get a you want to get a fight started, just choose one side <laughs> while no shots have been fired yet it's pretty easy to get a heated debate started on the subject it has led to more opportunities for more anglers to grow in the sport that much cannot be denied one thing for certain the sport has evolved and it continues to do so well folks that's going to do it for this episode of the bass to anglers podcast thanks for being with us until next time, keep both hands on the wheel, stay safe out there, and we'll see you soon.